Well, well, well. Stand out. How are we doing today? Woo! Man, take a lot of breath, Alex Berry. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Samstown Hotel and Gambling Hall in Tunica, Mississippi. And welcome to Samstown's River Palace Arena. You're experiencing the Little Rock Classic Arena Finals. And now, for the five finalists from Buffalo, New York, Cindy Coburn Carroll! position and now only one win away from the arena championship from Sakasana, New Jersey, Mariana Diupo. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the five finalists. Put your hands together. And now, let's go to Lee Isla It's only fitting that we have the king here. Some of the greatest country music stars have, stars have performed in this arena, and it's exciting to have five LTBT stars putting on the show tonight. But an unusual twist to this event, the ladies did not qualify here in Tunica. Where did they qualify? At Pike Lanes in North Little Rock, Arkansas. It was a wonderful event. We had all kinds of scoring records broken, eight 300 games, and it took a 228 average just to get here tonight. Well, let's hope the scores are that high for this crowd here tonight at the River Palace Arena. Jan, let's talk about the third seed player. It's Wendy McPherson Papanos. It is our third arena finals. It is her third arena finals. What is the secret to her success? Well, Leila, I would say that the Arena Finals does for Wendy McPherson Papanos something like what the telephone booth does for Superman. She transforms from this meek and mild character into a very animated player. She plays to the crowd. She draws on their energy. And if one of those two players tonight that start the match don't grab the crowd, Wendy will. The lady in the top seat position has also a bit of arena experience, Jan, but more importantly, she does not have the top seat experience, and that could be critical for Marianne Drupo tonight. Especially tonight, because we only have two lanes, one that pair of lanes, no practice pair. She'll sit back in the wings for the entire telecast with no warm-up. She has no experience from the number one seed to draw on, and I think it's really going to be tough for her tonight. Well, we'll have to wait and find out, but as they say in show business, it's re we're ready to get this show on the road. Our first match is coming up. It's Kathy Doran and Cindy Coburn Carroll right after we come back. Stay with us. And welcome back to the Greater Little Rock Open. We're here at Samstown Hotel and Casino in Tunica, Mississippi. And we are currently in the River Palace Arena. And we're looking at Kathy Dorn and Cindy Coburn Carroll. Cindy is going to start the match on lane one. We only have two lanes here in the arena. Up 
Buffalo, New York, the 39-year-old. It's a great opening shot for this kind of uh, atmosphere. It is. When I talked to her about the arena, she hasn't even been to one of our arena finals, and she said, you know, I'm just curious. I don't know what to expect, and I don't know how I'm going to react. Currently looking at Kathy Dorn. And the people on the right side of this arena cannot see the 10 pin. So I think they were giving her a round of applause thinking she, she struck. Speaking of arena experience, Kathy Dorn actually has had some. She uh, represented the United States in the AMF World Cup in France. And she's told me that was an arena final. So she had a little bit. Nice spare conversion. Kathy's been working on her spares. Uh, she worked with David Smith. She worked on changing her hand position. She said she was trying to go straight, but was behind the ball, and then actually almost backed it up, which she didn't want to do. Now she's on the side of the ball all the way through, and then flattens it as she releases for her spares. Spares always an important part of everybody's game. Kathy Dorn made a big move last night, Jan. She went from 10th to 4th to qualify here. And that was a different ball than she threw on the other lane. I don't know if the lanes are that different or she just chose to make a change after the first opening shot. That ball just continued to slide right. Never grabbed the lane, never broke into a roll till about 45 feet down. And converts to spare. Kathy from Linden, New Jersey, 29 years old. It's in her fifth year on the tour. Cindy Coburn Carroll working on a strike, up now in frame number two. Age 39, the veteran of the finalists tonight. She's been on tour. This is her 18th year. Joined the tour back in 1979. Has 15 national titles. And just like we saw Kathy do, Nicole Van Carroll misses the head pin. And players struggling a, l a little right now, getting comfortable with the whole atmosphere. Uh, plus, they're having a little trouble with their footing, uh, synthetic type approach, and, they're, and it's a little bit humid out, so there's a little tackiness to the approaches. They have to get adjusted to that. Four-time WIBC All-American. Converts the spare perfectly. You know, it's interesting, the Iowa, as you talk about Cindy being a veteran, I talked to her last night about, you know, I said, do you ever, when you're watching the new younger players bowl with the big cranker styles, do you ever try to change your game? And she said, no, you know, it's worked all these years. She said she has worked on getting increased ball speed and staying lower to the line. But she said, as you watch some of the newer players that come out, eventually they start trying to play straighter. So it's, it's almost like they try to play to what's worked for the veterans all these years. Very good point. So stay with your own game. Don't try to do what others do. Moving in a little bit, but came up light. Right, it looked like she tried to tighten up the line, play inside straight up at the pocket. This is definitely a different condition than what we saw all week. Uh, the players played anywhere from 10 to 20. Second arrow to fourth arrow on the lane, depending on how late in the evening it got and how much the lanes broke down. But these are much tighter. The lanes were hooking quite a bit this week. Were they synthetics in Little Rock? No, they weren't. They were wood, which also will have a tendency to play tighter in the front part of the lane, maybe hook a little bit more, though, in the back, back end. Kathy Doran up now in frame number three, trails by just two pins. Two-time collegiate All-American. Missed the whole winter swing due to a wrist, wrist surgery. This is only her fifth event. Oh, rips the rack. Beautiful shot. Right, she had uh, some wrist surgery. She had a, a cyst removed, and she went through a lot of therapy and worked really hard to come back. She said it was one of the best thing that, things that have happened to her. She's worked so hard, and she feels so strong and so confident now. She works out physically with lifting weights and bought an ab machine, and... She said she's ready to be a factor out here on tour. <laughs> Kathy Dorn stays very low all the way up through her approach. Keeps a very steady head. 
medium high back swing. Look at the deep slide, nice follow through. Creates a lot of leverage with her legs. Quick look at the scoreboard there. Kathy's trailing by just three pins. And that ball got up into a nice roll. First strike for Kathy Doran, and we'll be back. And we'll see if Kathy can gain the lead. But Cindy Coburn Carroll will be up. Don't go away. Cindy now up in the fourth frame, leading by three pins, qualified fifth. She actually led the qualifying round prior to match play. Broke all kinds of records. It was Chris Johnson's record that she broke for 16 games. Right, she averaged 249 for those 16 games. And this is how she did it. She's been working on her push away watch. She wants to just go straight out and drop. She lifted it up a little. She's trying to get away from that. Good knee, deep knee bend from her also. And a nice result. Lane two definitely hooking more than lane one. Trips out both the four and the seven. Cindy co comes from a big bowling fa family. Her mother, Doris, is a member of the WIBC Hall of Fame, has three pro titles, was runner-up to Bowler of the Year a couple times. Yeah. And uh, Cindy's sister, Kathy, has also won pro title. But Cindy and uh, Kathy did not bowl on the uh, tour at the same time. Kathy quit back in 75, and Cindy joined in 79. Speaking of Kathy's, Kathy Dorn up now in frame five, looking to double. If she does, she'll just cut her deficit back to three. Mm. Again, the 10 pin. Nice shot. It's going to be tough to kick 10 pins out today. The channels are very low. Uh, six pin, it's going to be hard to get it to kick back out and knock the 10 over. I said lane two is hooking more. What I'm seeing actually is the players are farther right on lane two, farther in on lane one. It looks like the hook point is in a different area on the lane. Did he try to condition the lane, Jan, like the condition at Little Rock? He tried to, but on synthetic and... It's not, you know, right, you're talking two different surfaces. Here. Exactly, and under the TV lights. So these players have to look on this as just a completely different event. They do, and it was difficult because our player services truck was not able to be here, so they couldn't drill equipment after they practiced on the lane. So they're going with whatever they have. Always testing the professional. Oh, that looks like a beautiful shot. I had the pleasure of bowling with Kathy Dorn along with Tammy Turner uh, recently in uh, the World Team Challenge. We had a lot of fun. It was the Country Club Lanes in Baltimore. We qualified at Perry Hall Lane. You came in third? Yeah, we bowled so well that day until we got to the show. Felt like I never knew how to bowl. Kathy's making great shots right now. She just needs to stay clean and hope she can start to carry. Ask Cindy what she did over the break and she said they were tied up a little bit with Jerry. Jerry graduated, her husband Jerry, graduated from Buffalo State. He has a teaching degree. He's looking for a job this fall. And they went house hunting. Didn't get anything though, but they're still trying. She had a fire recently. Uh, back, I remember, prior to uh, Claremore, when she turned around and won the Claremore Classic earlier this year. She had just come back, wasn't even sure she was going to bowl Claremore because they had had a fire in their apartment. A little inspiration to go out and win an event, she did. That was really the first event she had won in four years, too. This year has been a, a really nice year for Cindy Coleman Carroll. She's already made $22,000. Jan, last year, she only made 11000 for the full year. Right, and she said her ball speed has had a lot to do with that. She's really worked hard on increasing it over the last couple of years. Cindy's a member of Brunswick staff. Currently leads by 12 pins. Caught that double in the fourth and fifth frame. Cindy works at, uh, as a field trainer for Brunswick Train Centers, how to use their scoring systems in the basic, in the off times. She said she was not working too much in the past month and a half and just enjoying time at home. Get him on, Bob. Get him. Yeah. And 
get in the reaction she wanted. Well, Sydney Coburn Carroll leads by 12. It'll be Kathy Doran up when we come back. More action from here at the River Palace Arena. Town Tunica. Stay with us. Kathy Doran up in the seventh frame. She's been bowling a lot during the breaks. She's been bowling every weekend. <laughs> Except for the weekend that her sister Carolyn got married. She spent a lot of time planning that wedding. She said it was wonderful. Wouldn't have missed it. Enjoyed spending the time at home. She spent a lot of time with her dad, George, and uh, her mom, Marianne, uh, helped her plan. You know, they worked together in planning the wedding. Always a festive event. Kathy trying to double here. Cut her deficit to just two pins with a strike in the eighth. Been hitting the pocket here, but not carrying. A little too far to the right. Well, these lanes look about as different as two lanes can be. It appears they need to swing the ball on lane two and get it to the right to catch the dry. And on lane one, they need to keep it tight into the dry in the middle of the lane. If they get it right, it just slides. There's an out of bounds area. Coburn Carroll is currently working on a strike. Cindy had an incident last night in trying to make the show and position around in the sixth frame. She hit her ankle very hard. She couldn't stand on it for five minutes. Uh, completed the match, but only stayed in the was able to stay in the telecast only by three pins. Liz Johnson could have shut her out with a strike in the last ball and the fill ball. Which ankle was it? She hit her left ankle, her Slide slide ankle, as she was trying to keep the ball really tight in close to her so she could project it right, and she caught her ankle. She said it's the hardest she's ever done that. Oh. Twenty-two pin lead going up in the ninth frame. Cindy takes a re-rack. From 81 to 1986, this lady did not lose in the championship match. She won 10 consecutive times. Not to mention she was pretty deadly on TV otherwise, even if she didn't get to the championship match. She was a force to be reckoned with. I used to call her a tiger on TV, if I remember right. And then as most players see in their careers, a little bit of ups and downs, and uh, Cindy is right back up. She's been striking on this lane. She's staying in tight, not getting the ball past about the eighth board. Drove pretty hard. She tripped out the four and seven. And another 10 pin for Kathy Dorn. Well, she's just having a tough time carrying. Kathy. Kathy's on uh, exact duplication stats. She wanted to thank Joe Canigliera for helping her with her fit on her grip. Also our World Team Challenge uh, sponsor. I'd like to thank him myself for backing us in that event. Kathy finished fourth at the Storm Doubles earlier this year with Leanne Barrett. I'll tell you, that lady works really hard on her game and her physical conditioning and her nutrition and everything. And she is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Now oh, half a year remaining. Oh, 11 events have gone by. She's trying to make it back into the merit because she missed that whole winter. She missed the points for the entire winter swing, and she'd like to make uh, the tournament, the mixed doubles tournament, at the end of the year. Well, the lady coming up in our next match, Wendy McPherson Papanos, also missed the whole winter swing last year, and she has had a wonderful year so far this year and has turned it back around. She is currently the top-ranked player on the tour, so... Any indication or any motivation, Kathy Dorn could do the same thing for next year. Kathy wanted to make sure we thanked her caddy, Derek Troy. He helped her all week. We had caddies this week, and they were wonderful. Great hospitality from the folks in Little Rock. Uh, Kathy Dorn 
stays clean throughout the game, but is unable to pass Cindy Coburn Carroll. Cassie finishes out with 191. Kathy Doran. She'll now take on Wendy McPherson Papanos when we come back. More action from here at Samstown. And you are looking at Samstown Casino here in Tunica, the largest casino and entertainment complex in Mississippi. And we are ready for match number two. Cindy Coburn Carroll now advanced to take on Wendy McPherson Papanos. And we are currently in the 1600 seat entertainment arena featuring top name entertainment every weekend. However, this complex tonight holds 1,000 people. And coming up a little light leaves the two pin. I talked to Kathy Dorn after the match about the lanes and the two lanes being very different. She said initially, one was really hooking. That's why they're deeper on lane one. Two was tighter. That's why they're farther right. It's actually a hook point in a different place on the lane. But it appears that lane one is starting to carry down as we start to see him missing to the right on lane one. No problem with the two pin. Winning McPherson Papanos, 28 years old, from Henderson, Nevada. Her husband, Nick, actually works at Sam's Town in Henderson. Is that considered Las Vegas? Actually, Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, Henderson's just right outside. As Tunica is just outside of Memphis. And you said it, Dan. She comes out on the Superman on that shot. And that was a good view. You can see what I was talking about. Did, you can see how far right the ball was projected on the lane, and there's plenty of hook there. It's just farther right on lane two. It's very challenging condition, having to play two completely different lines, maybe using two different balls. Did Kathy remain with different balls in each lane? Yes, she did. Current leader in point ranking, second in earnings behind Tammy Turner for the 1996 season. There's that 10 pin again. I think we're going to see a lot of that tonight. As I mentioned earlier, the channels are lower than they sometimes are. That causes the six pin. It's harder for the six pin to jump back out and kick the 10 out. The lanes tonight provided by Brunswick. <laughs> Last night, uh, Wayne Newton appeared here in this arena, performed in front of a 1,600 capacity crowd, and it was just 18 hours later, these lanes were up and running. No yep. turnaround. That's the reason for only two lanes out here. It's also the reason the channels are lower. Uh, not enough time to raise them at the last minute. It's difficult and takes a lot of time to set up these lanes out here. They did an excellent job for the amount of time that they have. I know those guys who were working hard when I came in earlier, and they said they'd been working all night long, thanks to Butch and his staff. And the score of match number one, Cindy defeated Kathy, 230 to 191. Both players were clean. They saw no splits. However, Cindy was able to string strikes together. I believe Cindy finally threw a split after she struck in the 10th on her second ball. What didn't count as an open frame. Crosses over. Needs a six pin. This is a shot she just made. So she set that ball around 10. Now watch it just take off. That lane is really hooking. There's some dry parts. Looks like if you get it right around the 10th board. Cindy is a member of the Brunswick Advisory Staff. 
Wendy, a member of a mongoose staff. See her average this week, 231. Wendy was one of two players exempt. I believe it was Wendy and Marianne Drupo that were exempt this week. The other three players went through qualifying. So they didn't have to bowl. Uh, Wendy and Marianne did not have to bowl the 16 games of qualifying on Monday. Now, did they change that format from 18 games to 16 games? They did. We experimented with this last swing a little bit. We did it two weeks where there was only 16 games, one day of qualifying, two eight-game blocks. The rest of the time we did two days of qualifying, three six-game blocks, or 18 games. And did the ladies like it better, Jan? Did you like it? Wow, big mistake for Wendy. Wow, there's quite a bit of conditioner toward the middle of that lane. Don't see this too often, Jan. See how the ball's just sliding, never even gets into a roll. No chance to get over to the head pin. <laughs> she knew it when she threw it. That was one of those, oh no. Now trying to convert the baby split. Get back to that point, Jen. Did you feel that the 18 games and 16 games, one makes a difference over the other? I think there were good points to both in, in the 18 games, two days, uh, the people that qualified had the night off the second day and there was a practice session for the seated players that was good however the seated players were had two days to sit around and it was i don't know it was a lot of extra it was a, another extra day for the players yeah. wendy mcpherson bounces back picks up the baby split will, will she be able to bounce back in this match you'll have to wait and find out when we come back And welcome back to the Greater Little Rock Open. We're here at Sandstown Hotel and Casino in Tunica, Mississippi. Located just about 50 minutes south of Memphis. Again, missing the head pin on lane number two. These lanes really appear to be very spotty. A wet, dry type condition on lane two. If, if you miss to the left, the ball will just slide. It will never grab the lane. If you miss to the right, it's hooking. How is she going to convert this, Jan? She's going to try to get the ball to the left of the head pin. The ball will take out the one, two, and four pins, and the head pin will shoot over and take out the ten, ideally. With the amount of conditioner, should she be shooting it from the right or the left side of the lane? There's quite a bit of conditioner. She might have wanted to try it from the left side because of the sliding and go straight at it. Well, nonetheless, she missed it. So. It was she a good attempt. Open the door slightly for Wendy. As she just now leads by three pins. I'm a believer that a lot of times, especially when you have the head pin involved, it's easier to shoot though from where your strike target is because you know what that area of the lane is doing. Unlike what maybe what Wendy did when she completely missed mm -hmm. the head pin twice. Moriarty sitting there. One of our professionals out on tour. Wendy taking an extra second to dry her hand. One earlier in March in McAllen, Texas, in the Texas border shootout. Comes up a little high, trips both the four and the seven. A shot that we've seen Cindy carry a couple times. It does appear that high hits are carrying better than half pocket or light hits. See if you can get a look at a, a brace Wendy has on her elbow. She's wearing that for a good reason. She had had uh, arm surgery last year, had a bone spur or bone spurs removed, took three and a half months off, had extensive, extensive rehab, and now scar tissue has developed. It's very painful for her. She needs to have another surgery, which would be four months off. Mm -hmm. But right now she's bowling well, and she said she doesn't really know how it's happening. Oh, with that strike there in the sixth frame, Wendy Perpanos has taken the lead for the first time in this match. We'll be back with the rest of match number two after this. 
We're back now with the rest of match number two. While we were away, Cindy Coburn, Carol Spared in the sixth and seventh. Wendy McPherson Papanos just struck in the seventh. She is now up in the eighth. She can increase her lead to 28 pins with a strike right here. And she does so. Dan, we talked about Wendy's success not only in the arena finals, but also big major events. She was the youngest to win the Triple Crown. She was just 22 years old by the time she had put all three majors together. We always see her in the finals at Sam's Town, one of the biggest prize funds of the year. She can't really explain it. I mean, she doesn't consciously do that, but I think she just cranks it up a notch, you know, because mm -hmm. I said, do you think about before the arenas that it is an arena final? using this as an example and she said yes I do you know I realize it and I think boy I really want to do well but she wants to do well every week it, it has to just be a, just that much more concentration that much more desire motivation yeah Cindy taking a, a little extra time up in the eighth first split we've seen. Well, I shouldn't say that when he did leave the baby split. First big split we've seen. After shooting 230, obviously frustrating for Cindy right now. The lanes are definitely changing. Lane two definitely appears wet dry. 15 national titles, five regional titles, seven lost the titles, which is the Women's All-Star Association and the Northeast. Many credits. Cindy said she works really hard still at learning equipment, learning drilling patterns. Uh, the game has changed so much with equipment that it's hard to keep up, and even the professionals are constantly having to work at learning what type of equipment works the best. Quick look at the scoreboard. I found that to be true, just from trying to get ready for the World Team Challenge. The fact that if you are not constantly competing, you, you have a lot to learn about all the equipment that's constantly coming out. Cindy trailing by 42 pins. It's obvious that it will be Wendy that will move on. For Cindy Coburn Carroll, she'll settle for fourth place. But a wonderful week for her, setting that record in qualifying. I said, mm. you know, what did it feel like? I mean, the average 249 for 16 games. Not only that, she beat Tisha's record by over 200 pins. It's not like here's 10 or 15 pins, you beat a record. Mm -hmm. 200 pins. She said, well, I just couldn't believe it was happening. Wendy continues to strike, and she now advances on the number two qualifier, Michelle Mullen. That'll be coming up when we come back. And it's match number three of the Greater Little Rock Classic. We're here at Sam's Town in Tunica, Mississippi. And it's the semi-final match. Wendy McPherson Papanos has now moved up the ladder to meet Michelle Mullen. Wendy will be starting this match. She defeated Cindy Comer and Carroll 207 to 166 to earn the right to advance. Wendy's 11th year on tour, seven national titles, two regional titles was voted the 1986 Bowling Digest Rookie of the Year. So really started her career. Very promising. And what a stop that pin. Oh, oh. She can't wow. believe it. That was some interesting pin, pin action there. And Wendy, as you talked about earlier, is grabbing the crowd already. She's got them laughing on the sidelines. See if we can take a look here. Head pin pushed back, three pin off the wall, it looks like, coming across. Watch it, it's going to hit the head pin. Oh, no, you're not taking out the four. I'll be darned. Head pin and the three pin were working against her. And she converts the four pin. And our first look at Michelle Mullen in her 11th year on tour as well. 
Both of these players joined the tour in the same year, 1986. Four national titles, seven regional titles from Chicago, Illinois. to open up like that. Mm. Big split. Again, that lane a little bit wet dry. She caught the dry area of the lane too soon. Should the ball go right? She's going to catch about the sixth board a little too early on the lane. Sharp, sharp break in the back end. Takes two for count. Shakes it off. Moves over to lane one. Now Michelle's been working on Straightening out her arm swing, she said she was wrapping it too much behind her, which ca was causing some inconsistency. That could cause you to sail the ball to the right, as she just did maybe a little bit too soon. Uh, she worked with Don Moyer in Pennsylvania. In fact, they're going to be, Michelle and Don together, are going to be starting a professional bowling instruction school. Already touring the country on occasion. I have some flyers I have received in the mail on one- and two-day seminars. Instructional clinics will be doing their own. She was a bowling instructor for Team USA for two years. Now she's pretty much competing on the tour full-time, does not have time to dedicate to Team USA. Right, but she is doing, as you said, the clinics. She said that uh, instruction is really a passion of hers, and it, it goes along with the bowling. She feels she has to continue to bowling to be a good instructor, so she they kind of go hand-in-hand hand right now. Youngest woman to ever roll 300 games. Did so at the age of 14. And you mentioned a number of 300 games this week. Eight of them. And I know what Kathy Dorn and Cindy Comer and Carroll, two of our finalists that shot 300 games. Kathy also had a 299 in that last round. A little high. And these lanes have been consistently changing. Watch Wendy, she's got pretty fast feet in her approach. She's got kind of a medium-high backswing. Nice release there. She's really been working on trying to generate a little more ball speed. It looks like she's gotten her backswing up a little more than it used to be. It's okay to have quick feet as long as you have a quick arm swing to go with it. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of ways to do it, Leila. You yourself have quick feet when you bowl. Generate a lot of speed that way. Mm -hmm. I had to lower my push away in order to keep up with my feet. Um, seven pin remains. Last title came earlier this year in the Texas Border Shootout in McAllen, Texas. You know, I asked Wendy why she's been bowling so well, and at first she had no answer, but she did respond, and this is really interesting. She said the win in Omaha a year ago or a year and a half ago, it actually taught her, she relearned how to win. She said after a while she had a fear of losing, and when you are afraid to lose, you can't win. So she said that it was just a new learning process, and the fear is gone, and now she can win again. Qualified second this week with a 230-plus average. Big scores very big. It was extremely easy to get the ball to the pocket. Carey was good, obviously, by the scores. Michelle stopped from striking by a 10 pin. You mentioned the changes she'd made. She did tell me, though, she was really uncomfortable coming into this week. She said that. She said that she wasn't, they weren't natural for her yet, a lot of the changes. Uh, she also worked on trying to use her legs more. And when they're not natural, it's hard to come out and compete especially under these type of circumstances. And then you throw an arena on top of it. Best 96 finish so far for Michelle was 18th. So she did need to make some changes. She, 
she felt like she was struggling with her own game. Mm -hmm. And she credits, she wanted to credit uh, Dalton Bowl in Dalton, Illinois. They put down shots for her, different types of conditions throughout the break so that she could work on all different shots deep inside, farther out. That's important because these players do not bowl on house conditions and to practice, if you can't get a bowling center to put down something other than their house shot for you, it's really difficult to practice and to drill equipment. Michelle's first strike of the match. All the way out to about the seventh board or so coming in light. Look at her rip the rack. Something we haven't seen too much of today. Fortieth television career appearance, her third of ninety-six. Has a career television average of two hundred. Not real high. Four pin that tripping. Wendy also because of her surgery said she came back stronger. She said it, it made her mentally strong because the time off made her appreciate what she had and made her want it more. When you're out here it's easy to say, you know, complain about all the things as, as we all do about our jobs, I'm sure. But by being off she made her want to come back. Good point. Got to keep that mental game strong as well as the physical game. Wendy leading this match by nine pins. Both players, I was going to say both players were clean, but I caught the quick split there in the first frame by Michelle. Wendy looking still for her first strike in this match. Nice shot, six pin flew around the 10. Wendy's goal is to be inducted into the WIBC Hall of Fame, which I'm sure will come fairly soon. However, I know you need to compete in at least 15 WIBC events, and she's not quite that old yet. She's only 28 years old, so give her a few more years to compete in those. She's already won the Queen. She's won the WIBC All Events in 1994. So she's got all the right credentials. She just needs to get the years in there. She also told me one day she'd like to be Bowler of the Year for the professionals. Well, right now she's up right up there, second in earnings behind Tammy Turner, and I mentioned before, first in point ranking. Michelle Mullen fails to double, still trails. Wendy. Michelle really enjoys writing. I know she's been uh, writing for a uh, bowling magazine and also a paper down south, Bowling News, lately. I asked her about that because I said, hey, Michelle, you still writing? She said, yeah, she got a couple of bowling magazines. <laughs> Not compared to fair. And that is the amount of conditioner in the middle of that lane on lane two. It's, it's not how she's releasing the ball. She's making a good release. There's just so much conditioner that the ball is sliding. Yeah. And disaster has struck Michelle. Once again, now in the sixth frame. This condition probably seems more challenging because of the higher scoring they just came off of. It's Wendy working on her thumb hole, adding some tape, trying to get a good feel. Well, she takes two for count. Lane's a puzzle for Michelle Mullen. Will she be able to figure him out? We'll have the rest of the semifinal match when we come back. We're back now in the ninth frame. Wendy is leading by 17 pins. And the first strike for Wendy. 
Dan, she had the lead up to 31 pence, but then disaster struck. She left the 247, was unable to convert it. Right now, Michelle can only shoot 182. She would force Wendy to strike in the 10th. So there's still, still life for Michelle Mullen. She has to try to find something. She sent it way right. She's only struck once this game. That was in the fourth frame. You know, we talked about how important spares were earlier and how Kathy Dorn had really been working on it. Well, this game really proves it. Wendy Papana's thrown the first seven frames were all spares. She split in the eighth and struck in the ninth, but Michelle Mullen has left a couple of slips. On this type of condition, that's what you need to do, just shoot your spares, stay clean. This is something the professionals face from week in, week out, day to day sometimes. It's such a change in conditions. They have to be able to bowl on challenging conditions, keep the ball in play, shoot their spares. At the same time, they have to be able to open up the lane and create some area and throw some strikes when the condition warrants. Right now, best possible score for Michelle would be 170. She would force Wendy to mark. Now there's one. Crowd appreciative of that strike. Well, you mentioned that this probably seems even a little bit harder because they had a lot of area throughout the past few days. I mean, your arm swing gets a little loose and you get a little bit to where you're sending it right and you can trust in here all of a sudden you can't do that or... You do, you get used to having a little room. I mean, these players average 230 and 240 and it wasn't on tough conditions. I mean, you have to have a little bit of room in order to be able to do that, even at the professional level. make it back. You know, sometimes I remember it takes me a day or two just to get your arm swing back in line you know, for, for the next condition. It, and it does. You're right, exactly. Well, and this is probably the opposite end of the spectrum. It looks like they really don't, don't have any room at all out there now. Leaving the wash out. Still shot in the 10th frame. Converts it anyway. Ends up shooting 160. Stay behind the line, get a couple pins. And she will now advance to meet our top seed, Marianne Drupo. Jan, this has to give Marianne a little confidence, though. That, I hey, the scores are low. I would think so, right, because she can, she can throw hard. She can stay real direct at the pocket. Well, easier than seeing someone totally lined up and thinking, oh my gosh, I have to try to beat her, and she already knows where she's playing and what she's doing. It appears Wendy is you know, struggling as well as the other players. She's just converting spares and really not getting into a lot of split trouble. You're right, well, Marianne knows it's probably gonna be tough out there. She knows exactly she's not coming up against the buzzsaw. Wendy McPherson Papano finishes out with 185. It's more than enough to advance to meet Marianne DeRuffo right after these messages. And there's a look at the trophy. One of these two ladies will be taking that home with them. Will it be Wendy McPherson Papano or Marianne DeRuffo? Only 10 frames to go, and we'll find out. Wendy is starting the match. Scores have come down a little bit. Matches are now closer. Gone from 40 pin victories to just 26 pins. Separating the last match. Ball hooks up a little early, leads to three pins. It looks like Wendy's been changing balls, trying some different equipment. Different than normal, the players that have just won the match, Wendy in other words, actually did get a few shots on this championship pair. She received 10 shots while Marianne received 10 minutes of warm-up because there is no other pair for Wendy to stay loose on. Wendy came very close to missing that three pin. Our first look tonight, Marianne Drupo from Succasana, New Jersey, 29-year-old, 5'7". 
won a title in 93, 94, and 95. Hope to make it tonight the one in 96. Set high is the 3 6 10. Slow down. And apparently, Marianne is wearing a wireless mic. So we'll hang out a little bit, see if we hear any comments from her. It's always interesting to hear how the professionals talk to themselves or to the pins. Despair. Big year last year for Marianne Drufo, who made the WIBC All-American team. Come on. Well, Marianne just changed to 15-pound equipment over the break. She said she thought it would give her, be, she could be more versatile, she could do more with the release. Also gain more endurance and be able to create more speed if she needed to. Come on, baby! And we saw that second championship round appearance, that is in 1996. She has 14 career television appearances. Marianne jumping right off here on lane one, a great shot. Blows everything left, taking out the seven pin. Come on, baby. An affectionate way to talk to your bowling ball. Board match dead even. And the ball that Wendy did go to, I mentioned she was trying different equipment, warming up, and I've been told that that is a ball she just pulled out of the bag. She didn't get to throw it for any shots. She just decided to go with it. And that's the knowledge the professionals have of the equipment they have. They can watch one ball react and know what they can go to from there. And she pulls it out of the bag for the double as she takes the lead early in this match, forcing Marianne DeRupo to strike to stay even. Marianne's really been working a lot, I know, with uh, her mental game. Her mentor, what, Alita Phil, worked with her. Yes, she has. And Marianne also told me recently she started reading some of her old college material on mental toughness. Uh, she's trying not to let a bad game bother her. She told me she has struggled. And there's that spot of conditioner that the ball hits on that lane. She's been struggling with our new format because she said for her, when she doesn't qualify and she's seated, it's tough for her to have anything to draw on once she gets into match play. If she struggles the first few games of match play, she can't say, hey, yeah. but I bowled so good yesterday in qualifying, I know I'll work my way out. She doesn't have that now to draw on, and she said it's, it's tough for her. In fact, the only show she made this year was the show when she was not seated and had to qualify. Oh. Interesting. And converts the spare. Has a degree in athletic training from the University of South Carolina. Also, Marianne played softball for the Budweiser Bells, South Carolina All-Star team. Great match play record, 21 wins, seven losses. Here she likes lane number one. Beautiful shot. Wendy working on a double. Take her lead to 20 pins if she strikes here in the fourth. She did look like she slipped or stuck on that shot. 
Didn't have good footing. They're going to get a chance to take a look at it. She's coming forward. Watch. Mm. See how she fell off the shot? Almost looked like it was starting to go out from under her and then just stopped. Well, a little wry smile there. Good point if you are having trouble with your footing. Oftentimes you don't get a totally consistent slide across an approach. You need to try to take up that shock with your leg. You know, let your let your leg bend and take up the shock of sticking or slipping a little bit. I mean, if you keep your body weight over your foot, over your feet, and don't get too far in front or behind, it's a little bit easier to stay on balance. I notice approach problems definitely affect the women professionals more so than the men because the fact that they use so much of their lower body in their game, whereas the male professionals have a tendency to use so much more of their upper body that if they have approach problems, they just kind of their upper body takes over that. It compensates for their lower body. Exactly. Because women can't do that. Right. Because the men have the upper body strength to do that. Another thing is most or a good portion of the men plant now. They don't slide anymore. They just plant their foot and pull the ball through. Well, Wendy misses the spare. She now trails by five pins. Well, Wendy make it two for 96, or will Marianne win? We're back in the final match here at Samstown Tunica. While we were away, Wendy Papanos opened in the fifth, spared in the sixth, struck in the seventh. Marianne Drupo, you can see there, opened in both the fifth and the sixth. Solid nine pin in the seventh lead kind of changing back and forth but right now Marianne is trailing by 20 pins low scores but still close it's been going back and forth mm. and tries to cross over does not carry the Brooklyn strike Wendy got a break carried the, the Brooklyn in the seventh Marianne made a big change during the break she picked up a different wristband one that she goes to when usually when the lanes are dry here she tried to play in the dry and play a little straighter. She threw a great shot. The frame before left a solid nine pin. And then on lane one crossing over. Land changes balls to convert the spare. She also takes her wristband off when she converts her spares on the right side. Six pin and ten pin. Trying to get the ball to go a little straighter. Break her wrist back, straighten it out. Okay, Wendy can increase her 21 pin lead to 31 with a strike here in the eighth frame. This right lane seems to be a mystery to her, though. Both lanes. <laughs> on, Definitely the right. Leads the 2-7. I don't, I don't know what to say. I can feel for these professionals out there. It's a frustrating situation when you can't find anything. Um, occasionally, it does happen. We all know it. Anybody that bowls, conditions change under the lighting. and It's tough. Wendy trying to become the second player to win two titles here in 1996. This was her first shot. The ball's going to continue to slide. They're not going to start to break till about right here, very late, just touching the outside of the head pin. Lots of pins hit that seven pin as well. A nice spare conversion conversion, fitting the ball, taking out both pins with the ball. It's the best way to do it. Well, with a win here tonight for Wendy, she could actually uh, get real close to this bowler of the year race, going and finishing out the summer, going into the fall. It's always a close race. It's always fun, exciting. Tammy Turner right now with two wins in 96 is the only player that has two wins. Wendy wins tonight. That gives her two wins, and we know she was second in earnings behind Tammy. I'm not sure if a win will push her over that. This could be the year for her. She would like to win bowler deer some year. Marianne Drupal, on the other hand, can strike out for 194. She could force Wendy to strike up on that right lane. That could be difficult. Yeah, if she actually struck out, she would force Wendy to double to win. Mm -hmm. Strike spare could, could it be a tie. So Marianne needs to set some strikes up. 
lots of wood on that shot. It's almost as if she threw it really hard. I mean, her ball looks like it never had a chance to hook. She did throw hard. She was, but I, again, I think she's trying to play up the dry. I think she just caught a little bit too much of the conditioner on that shot. I know she said she went to 15 pounds. It's interesting because she always threw 16 so hard, and I asked her why, and she said, I just wanted to try it. Mm -hmm. So whether she maybe thought she was going to get a little bit more deflection, Diana Teeter's a player on tour, often known to throw 14 pounds because mm -hmm. her ball breaks so hard in the back end. And look at the scoreboard going into the 10th frame. Situation is this, Marianne can strike out for 183. She would force Wendy to strike first of nine spare. At least get nine. Wendy would need to mark. She'd need to mark. She'd need a nine count, wouldn't she? No? Just mark. <coughs> Doesn't matter now. Mary Ann didn't strike out. <laughs> well, Mary Ann washes out. And unfortunately for her. She only finishes out with a 158. And she had to know those scores were low sitting on the sideline, but you just know you can come out and do a little bit better than 160. You want to hope to. Wendy had never won from the number three position. We'll have to change that graphic for the next time she's up. Put a one there for one title from the middle of the pack. She's now won two out of our three arena final shows. And she has won titles from every position on the ladder. And again, second player in the 96th season to chalk up two titles. And even though she chops the spare, she has enough to take home the championship. 180 over Marianne's 158. Wendy McPherson Capanos, our winner here at the Greater Little Rock Classic, and we'll be back with a few comments from our newest champion. And congratulations to our champion, Wendy McPherson Papanos. Final score 180 to 158. And with us is Joe Fiscaldo, the vice president and general manager here at Samstown, to make the check presentation. Joe? On behalf of Samstown Hotel and Gambling Hall in Tunica, Mississippi, I want to present a check to you, Wendy McPherson. The great champion, a great match uh, for $9,000. Congratulations. Great job. And Wendy, to go along with that check, we have a beautiful trophy and our presenter, Bob Adams, the director of marketing here at Samstown Tunica. Bob, I know you have a few words to say. Wendy, we want to thank you very much for helping to bring the LPBT here. It's been a great success. We wish you much success in the future. And on behalf of Samstown Hotel and Gambling Hall in Tunica, Mississippi, the new gaming capital of the Mid-South, congratulations to you, Wendy. There you go. Thank you very much. And as always, I know Dan has a question for you, Wendy. It was a tough night, but the scores were low but close. Uh, Dan? Wendy, we've all talked about your toughness in arena finals. Is it all the people here, or what is it that does it for you? Um, I had a great time tonight. Uh, I can't really explain it. I mean, normally scores like that don't win matches, and um, I was just kind of hung in there along with everyone else. and. Um, you know, everyone was absolutely wonderful here, and, you know, I, I, that helped me out a lot also. All right, Wendy, where's the telephone booth? Where's the Superman cape? That's what Jan talked about early on in the opening. It's got to be hidden around here somewhere. You know, I can't explain it. I, this is the first time I've ever won two titles in a year, uh, um, you know, and this is a special moment for me, and, you know, I would... Definitely like to thank Joe and Bob here at Samstown Tunica, Mississippi, uh, along with Samstown Las Vegas for uh, their absolutely wonderful continued support of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour 
and everyone who came up from Arkansas to watch this evening. I thank you also. Well, I know your goal is Bowler of the Year. You're well on your way with just half a year left. For all of us here, Prime and Jan Schmidt, myself, Leila Wagner. So long, everyone. Don't forget to join us next week as the Ladies Tour moves on to Goose Creek, South Carolina. Check your listings for the times.